this tutorial, we are going to look at the display of geometry in Isomserve. We will look at the display menu, which controls line and point styles as well as shading. We will also look at how we can control the quality of the graphics. Go to File Open. Pick Project Isomsurf Tutorial and the database Display Objects. This database contains a range of object types that you might see in an Isomsurf database. Go to the Display menu from the Service Functions. Alternatively, you can access Display from the top menu bar or you can use the shortcut Ctrl plus A. It is good practice to keep the service menus, including display, in the lower left corner of the screen. Make sure that the menu is fully open, if not, then click on the arrow. Make sure that selected is off, and apply immediately is on. This will ensure that any changes you make to the menu are immediately reflected in the graphics. There is never any real need to turn this off. The display menu is arranged in five blocks on the right hand side one for each object type, points, raw data, curves, surfaces, and scan. These blocks are arranged in four columns, object types, line point display, labels, and colors. Let's look at point objects first. The tick means that we can switch the display of points on or off. In the line point column, we can change the style of the points using the pull down menu. In the Labels column, we can choose how or whether we display the point numbers. It is very rare to need to know the point numbers, so usually we don't need the label. However, it can be useful if the points are difficult to see amongst a lot of other geometry. In the last column, we can change the colour of all the points. Clicking on the colour swatch accesses a range of colours. If you want to change the available colours, then you can do this through the Display Colors menu from the top bar. The next block in the Display menu is for raw data. In the Line Point column, we can change the line style in the first pull-down and the point style in the second pull-down. The displayed raw data points represent the actual XYZ values of the raw data. In the Labels column, the first pull-down allows us to display the label on each raw data segment. The label shows the contour name and the segment number. The 123 icon allows us to toggle the raw data segment point numbers on and off. When the segment button is clicked on, then the end points of raw data segments are shown. This and the raw data labels may be useful on occasions when for example, you need to connect several raw data segments together. Once again, the color swatch in the fourth column can be used to alter the colors of all raw data. The curves block is next. The segments tick box will switch all curve segments on or off. Switch control point on to see the control points of all curve segments. In the line point menu, we have a NURBS tick box. When ticked, NURBS and B-spline objects will be shown in red by default. It is recommended that this is always on, as NURBS and B-splines are generally best avoided in ISOSERV, so it is as well to be alerted when they appear, for example within imported data. Below the NURBS box, there are pull-downs for the line styles of curve segments and the line styles of the control point hull, i.e. the lines that connect the control points. I would recommend setting the segment line style to solid and the control point hull line style to dotted. Next to the line styles, there is the point style pull down for the segment endpoints. I recommend that you set this to X. Below this, there is the point style pull down for the curve segment control points. I suggest that you set this to zero. In the labels column, we can turn labels on or off. The first label box is for displaying the curve name and the curve segment number. This may be useful occasionally. We can also put number labels on the control points, but this is seldom useful. If there are NURBS or B-spline curves in the model, then segment will show us the internal knot points of these curves. The knots are places where the curve has a reduced level of continuity, such as tangency only. 
They enable NURBS or B-spine curves to describe complex shapes within a single curve segment. The colour swatches enable us to apply different colours to curve segments and the control point holes. Moving further down the menu we come to the surfaces block. This controls the display of patches and faces. Edges toggles the edge display on or off. Control point toggles the internal control points on or off. Edge control point toggles the edge control points on or off. ISO curves controls the display of internal ISO curves. In the line point column, we can specify that NURBS and B-spines are highlighted in red by ticking on the NURBS box. As for curves, I would recommend keeping this ticked on at all times so that you're alerted about the presence of any NURBS or B-spines. The line display of the edges, control point holes and ISO curves is controlled with the pull downs below. The control point symbols are accessed through the point pull down to the right. In the labels column, the first label pull down toggles the display of the patch or face numbers. This is sometimes useful. The segment will show the knots or segment boundaries of any NURBS or B-spine surfaces. This is useful when you are about to convert NURBS or B-spine surfaces to Bezier. The little angle symbol, when ticked on, shows the U direction of patches. You can think of the graphic on the patch as a half arrowhead pointing in the U direction. This can be helpful when you're trying to put diagnostic curvature on several patches and you need to align the U and V directions on all the patches. It's also useful in understanding the all function in the patch modify control point menu. The remaining labels are the control point rows, points and ISO curves. These are rarely used. The U and V values define the number of ISO curves that would be displayed in each direction. The colours of the edges, control points and ISO curves can be set using the colour swatches. The last block is for scan data. Scan line is only relevant for structured scan data, usually created by a mechanical measurement device. It's very rare to need this function as modern scan data is triangulated. Points refers to the digitised locations of the scan. Facets refers to the triangular facets of the scan. In the line points column, we can control the display of scan lines and points. In the labels column, we can switch labels on to show the scan set and number information. Reduced is very useful as it means that the points displayed are less dense so that the graphics area is less cluttered. It does not reduce or alter the data in the database, only how much data is shown in the display. Segments shows endpoints of scan lines which is not really relevant any longer. The type of facet display is defined in the drop down menu. Flat shows the facets as flat shaded triangles. Guro blends the triangles. Perhaps surprisingly, Guro is graphically less demanding than flat. Flat should be used when you want to see precisely where the scan data points are. Edge shows only the edges of the facets. Shade Edge applies shading to the edge lines. As always, there are colour swatches for the scan in the last column. In the bottom left corner of the display menu, there is an option to put anti-aliasing on curves. Anti-aliasing is a way of smoothing the display of curves by adjusting the intensity of individual pixels. Shading switches surface shading on and off. Hidden line, which is only available when shading is on, results in a wireframe display of the surfaces, but hides any edges which will be obscured in reality. So far we have looked at geometry which is not actively selected in any function. Let's have a look at a selected curve segment for example. If we pick Modify Curve Control Point and then pick a curve segment, we will see that the display of the curve segment changes. The way in which this selected curve segment is displayed is defined in the display menu. There is another layer to the display menu which is accessed by picking Selected at the top left corner of the menu. Looking at the Curves block, here we can see the definition for selected curve segments. I suggest changing the settings so that the curve segments have solid lines and the control point holes are dotted. I usually set the segment endpoints to X and the curve control points to zero. Notice that all selected objects are white. The colour swatches are not available to pick here. 
change the color of selected objects, go to Windows Preferences Selection and change the color of Highlight 1. I sometimes use this when working with a light colored image in the background. Then setting the highlight color to a dark color or black makes the selected objects easier to see. With Selected picked in the display menu, you can set the rest of the object types to whatever you need. You may have noticed that the patch and face edges and curve segments are rather faceted. In order to improve the quality of the lines and surfaces, then pick the set tessellation icon. Normally we want the tessellation of the shading and the wireframe to be the same, so tick equal tolerances on. In the shading text box, the lower the number, the more refined the graphics. Setting it too low will slow the graphics down considerably, depending on the speed of your machine. 0.005 usually works well. The number of triangles shown refers to the scan data facets and also the shading of surfaces. When shading, surfaces are approximated by a triangulated display. Returning to the display menu, we have now set the display for all the non-selected and selected objects. We have also defined the tessellation in the tessellation menu. In order to save all of these settings, we use save and assign a name such as display1. This then appears in the lower scroll window of the menu. These are the user-defined display variants. The display variant DB is that of the model when it was last saved. In the upper scroll window, we have system-defined display variants. Double-clicking on one will activate the relevant display settings. If we double-click on the variant display1 that you previously saved, we will go back to those settings. Notice that the user-defined variants can be renamed and deleted if necessary. It is a good idea to set up your own variants, which you can use from one model to the next.